Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I've got a quick tip here for you. Um, I was working on trying to create a 3D object and turn it into a 2D uh, sprite sheet animation uh, for the pixel art game that I'm making. The reason I wanted to do that is because this is a kind of complex object. Animating by hand is very difficult and I thought maybe this will help speed things up a little bit for this particular for this particular object. So the first thing I did was I went into Blender and I decided uh, what resolution do I want the output at. And for my game, 32 by 32 pixels is perfect. Uh, I also set how many frames I wanted. So I set the number of frames to 12 and the frames per second to 12. And what that does is it ends up giving you 12 frames on your timeline exactly. And when you export this as an animation, you'll get 12 frames out exactly. The other thing I did was I changed the output to PNG. So what it'll do is it's going to write out 12 different PNG files. My plan would was to load those into a sprite and then do some cleanup on them and then export the sprite sheet from there. The next thing you need to do is create the actual object. So in my case, I started with the default cube. I subdivided it a couple of times. Uh, this is Blender, the, the animation system that you're using, you know, may be different. Uh, but you go in, you subdivide. In Blender, you search for subdivide or hit Control E, and you can subdivide it a couple of times. That's what I've done here. Then I applied uh, some modifiers. One was a displacement modifier that uses a texture. It's a kind of cloudy texture. And the then after that, I applied a decimate um, modifier, which when you look at them uh, one at a time, you can see, I'll turn off the decimate. So you can see there's the default cube. I turn on displacement and it does that. And I turn on decimate and it does that. Kind of makes it a little bit more low poly. So you can play with the strength, you can play with the texture, you can play with the ratio here until you get something that you like. I was going for icy rocks, uh, something kind of crystalline. And this is what popped out. I like this and that's what I went with. The next thing um, I did was just set up the animation. Because I wanted this to be a rotating object, I went to frame one and added a keyframe where I'm rotating it around the Z axis. I started it at zero, and then at frame 12, I did 330. Uh, you don't wanna go a full 360 because if you do, then the final frame 12 and frame one will be identical, and you'll get a little pause or hitch in your animation. So I did 30 degrees less, which is 360 divided by 12, and you end up with a nice looping animation. Next, I worked on the materials. And what you need to do is you create a uh, secondary pane here and switch it to rendered view, and you can see exactly how it's gonna render out. Uh, this is the camera view here. You can get that by hitting zero on the keypad. And then you can adjust the camera until you've got things framed just the way you like them. Then I worked on the materials. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, the EV renderer in Blender, which is a PBR based renderer. Uh, as a game developer, you probably recognize a lot of these different things, transmission, roughness, metallic, color, you know, pretty, pretty normal stuff. But the material is only part of it. It's very important to set up the lighting correctly. So I thought I could get away with no lights or one light. Um, what I ended up doing on this object was turning off the shadows, uh, shadow mode none in this case. So no shadows are falling on this object. And I added a bunch of lights. Uh, there's several different lights here. There's a backlight, there's two side lights, there's a bottom light and uh, they're all varying power and varying color and i just did that you know played around with the lighting until i got an effect that i that i liked here's the full turnaround at uh at 12 frames per second finally there were some settings some render settings that i needed to set uh, if you look at the render for any particular frame this is frame nine you can see if i blow it up that you're getting a lot of anti-aliasing in here Right, I'm getting a lot of anti-aliasing in here that I really don't want. You can fix that by going into the render settings, film, and changing this film's filter size down to zero. And then if I re-render it, you can see I'm getting a much, much, much less um, 
uh, anti-aliasing around the edges. There's still some in interior uh, color changes, but that's okay. Uh, I'll show you how we can clean that up in A-Sprite. The other thing you want to do is change this to transparent, and that makes sure that the background film is see-through, and you'll end up with, a, uh, with sprite images that don't have any background on them. If you need transparency, and when I started this, I thought that I did, uh, but I changed my mind later. But if you do need it, uh, it's a feature you need to turn on in Eevee. Uh, it's off by default for performance reasons. You go into the render properties, turn on screen space reflections, turn on refraction, and now things like glass materials and transmissive materials, uh, index of refraction, those will all uh, work the way you expect. And then finally, I just rendered it all out. It renders very, very quickly. It's a very small sprite and it's very low resolution and it's, you know, EV is a real-time renderer. So it renders all 12 frames of that animation very quickly. And then I just go into a sprite and I can open that file and you can just select one of them. It numbers them by default and hit OK and a sprite will conveniently just pull them all in for me. Now one thing you'll notice here is that I've got a um, an RGB in image, but I want to convert it to my palette, and my palette has a lot fewer colors. What you do is you go into here, select color mode, change it to indexed, select your palette, then change it to indexed, and it changes all the colors in the image to images or to colors that are in your palette. And you may get some wonkiness, like in this case, I'm getting a lot of greens that I didn't want, and, and that's just because my palette has very few blues in it, um, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is next uh, go ahead and do some cleanup. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the magic wand, uh, pick a color that I want to replace, choose the color that I want to replace it with, and hit F and fill it in. And I'll just continue doing that through all the different frames. The important thing is, you know, you need to maintain some consistency. Um, so that uh, you're not getting weird color changes uh, throughout the image from frame to frame. And then once you're done replacing all the colors, you end up with your cleaned up, nice looking sprite. Exporting is pretty simple. You hit export, you choose a layout, you choose a position or a, a file name. And uh, in this case, I'm exporting by rows, two rows, six columns, and it gives me this nice six by two sprite sheet. Hit export, and then I can go over to Godot, set up the sprite, and um, set up the sprite and everything else that I need to do uh, for this particular object and then you can see it in the game. So this actually did speed me up quite a bit. I was pretty happy with the result. There's big ones, there's small ones. And they look convincing enough to me, like uh, kind of rocky, icy uh, asteroids that you might see floating around in space. I've got different sizes, small ones, big ones, and they look convincing enough to me. They look like they're spinning, um, they look three-dimensional in this two-dimensional game, and uh, they look icy and kind of rocky, like you'd expect these, these uh, asteroids to look floating around in space. So I was pretty happy with the process. It did speed things up. Once I figured out Blender and figured out what I'm doing, I think I might use this process for um, a few other things in the game or definitely if I have complicated spinning objects like this uh, it's the way to go. I hope this has been helpful to some of you. Take it easy everybody.